now this is a simple class uh, this this class is specifically uh, made to understand the difference between or to understand uh, the terminological difference between the gas and the vapor so uh, typically uh, i personally and, and of course you would also not care about uh, when when someone uses the term gas or vapor you would not really care uh, but we have to now care because questions are being asked especially uh, in in the olympiads uh, and your board exams questions are being asked on, on this that what is the gas and what is the vapor and what's the difference between those two uh, those two terms so because questions are asked now we really have to care and we have to understand and, and indeed uh, in the scientific world there is a difference uh, between those two terms gas is distinct from vapor and we understand this by going back to the phase diagram so we have seen this phase diagram we have taken a se separate class on this and uh, this is a phase diagram of any particular substance okay this is this is not uh, specifically water this is a general uh, phase diagram and the thing about this diagram is that there are several things mentioned here but we won't really care about those if you care about those things then definitely go back and look at the class a specific class on on phase diagram where we have uh, explained all of these terminologies and those are of course very 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 important now specifically today what we are interested in is that as we increase the temperature at the same pressure what happens to the substance so as you know that this phase diagram uh, shows us the various phase phases of a substance so here we can uh, quickly identify some of the phases that we know like for example solid phase uh, the liquid phase and the gaseous phase so that is the solid liquid and, and gas uh, phase of the same substance uh, in the case of water that would be the water vapor the liquid water that we drink and the ice okay so those are the three phases quickly identified from this diagram the other phases also uh, the supercritical fluid okay so that's let's just understand uh, what happens if we increase the the temperature how does the phases of the substance they change okay this is not very difficult at the same pressure let's say that we kept the pressure the same what happens is that the first the there would be substance would exist only a solid phase for example we will only have ice as we increase the temperature the ice would change to liquid water and we'll come into this region of the phase diagram as we increase the temperature furthermore uh, we would the the uh, uh, ice the, the liquid water would convert into the water vapor or the gaseous uh, gaseous phase and will come through here so that is uh, uh, to be expected okay so here we have as we increase the temperature we reach a special temperature which is known as the critical temperature now if you notice this this line about the critical temperature okay there is one thing very special about this line and what is that thing as the temperature increases above the critical temperature right which is which is that we are talking about uh, this region the the last region this region just just look at this region okay as the as the temperature increases above the critical temperature no matter what the pressure is so this is the various pressures we cannot go to the liquid phase of the substance okay that is the important thing here okay so we'll repeat that important thing again in this region where our temperature is above the critical temperature and that is the definition of the critical temperature it is the temperature after which i cannot have the liquid phase of the substance just by changing the pressure so at various pressures after this critical temperature no matter how much i change the pressure i decrease the pressure i increase the pressure no matter what i do with the pressure after the critical temperature i cannot get back my liquid phase of the substance it ceases to exist the only two phases which exist are this supercritical fluid phase at high pressure and at low pressure i have this gaseous phase okay let's look at what happens below this uh, critical temperature below this critical uh, temperature is our our normal temperature range where we our uh, we, we can think about uh, water liquid water in, in in this being in this range in normal atmospheric uh, pressure and temperature conditions so below the critical temperature i have both the liquid and the vapor phase can exist depending upon the pressure so if i change the pressure if i decrease the pressure i can get the vapor phase if i increase the pressure i can get back to the liquid phase at the same temperature okay 
but this is only below the critical temperature okay so this is where the distinction between the vapor and the gas comes into play above the critical point when the liquid phase ceases to exist if i have the gas of any substance i will call it the gas okay uh, this is this is what this is this is the gaseous phase below the critical temperature if i have the gas of any substance i will call it vapor okay that is the distinction below the critical temperature i have vapor above the critical temperature i have gas now another way to look at it is is, is the following below the the critical temperature because both the liquid and the vapor phase can exist if i have a liquid of any any substance in equilibrium with its gas for example water if there is a liquid water is is present then it is not only the liquid water which is present the liquid water will evaporate and there will be some amount of water vapor also present in equilibrium with its liquid so if i have the 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 liquid of any substance in equilibrium with its vapor in equilibrium with its gas then it gas gas phase gaseous phase then i call it the vapor so vapor is in equilibrium with the liquid phase of the substance that's another way to to look at it now now you will uh, one of the questions that you will you will ask is that in common usage this is not how we how we how we deal with things okay for example in atmosphere uh, we call the the oxygen and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere the, all the oxygen and the carbon dioxide which which exist in the atmosphere we call them oxygen gas and carbon dioxide gas although those gases are not above the critical uh, uh, critical temperature okay our normal the, the critical temp we have not reached the critical temperature of oxygen and carbon dioxide yet but we still can call them gas um, this is our colloquial usage our normal usage of these these terms okay so even even though we should ideally and scientifically we should call them vapor so we should call oxygen also vapor uh, because uh, it is below its critical temperature in normal atmospheric conditions we get by with saying that it is a it is a gas its oxygen gas is present carbon dioxide gas is present nitrogen gas is present but those gases are actually below the critical uh, temperature which so we should call them uh, oxygen uh, vapor carbon dioxide vapor but we don't call it call them like this uh, we call them gas only and that is acceptable uh, like i said in colloquial usage uh, we can we can use uh, uh, either we can use gas or we can use the vapor but when you are asked specifically to distinguish between the gas phase and the vapor phase this is how you will distinguish it in the in in your in your exam because this is the scientific uh, usage of these terms like i said one of the things is specifically where we call things vapor only in normal usage also is when the liquid phase coexists with the gaseous phase in that case the gaseous phase we do not call it the the gas of the substance we call it the um, the liquid phase uh, we call the vapor we specifically call it the vapor for example in the mercury vapor lamps right so those were the older older lamps the mercury mercury liquid mercury exists together with the gaseous uh, mercury so in that case we will say uh, it's a mercury vapor lamp and not really mercury gas lamp okay so so one specific usage where even in colloquial usage we would use the term vapor is when the two substances the liquid and the gas they exist together they coexist if they coexist then this gas is specifically known as vapor all the time even in colloquial usage okay otherwise in colloquial usage we sometimes call the things gas even though we should uh, call them uh, vapor because they are there critic below their uh, critical uh, point so hopefully this distinction is is very 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 clear and like i said it is important for our olympiad exam and the distinguishing point is the critical temperature okay the critical temperature above it we have the gas phase below it we have the uh, vapor phase okay so if you have questions and doubts or you have other similar terminology kind of problems that you are looking at uh, definitely put down in the in the comments below and and we will be happy to bring uh, uh, classes to you on, on those topics as well okay thank you